Hi, and welcome to this Pro Tools Expert video from Metropolis Studios at the launch of the new Genlec The One series. I am honored to have Thomas Lund with me, who is the chief technologist of Genlec. So, Thomas, I'd love to hear about the ultimate point source technology and how that actually translates in real life. So would you be able to take us through how Ultimate Point Source works and what the theory is behind it? Sure. So from an uh, application's point of view, what we've always been doing is using microphones that are in, in effect uh, point receivers. So having the complementary for that is really important. And in that case, the loudspeaker, of course, uh, making sure that we can have a wide frequency range, we need more than one driver. And the problem has been for decades that these drivers are located in different positions, and that creates um, coloration, when, especially when you move off axis be because you change the relative distance to these drivers. So you, you color uh, the audio in different ways. So therefore, um, point source has been an ideal for a long, long time. And uh, one of the first companies actually to do uh, an attempt on that was uh, Tannoy, a British company, but and that dates many, many years back, and many other uh, attempts uh, at it have been made. But the problem is it always came with compromises, so different compromises like um, diffraction, discontinuities in the, um, in the signal path, which creates diffraction and distortion effects. Also having more than a two-way system was a challenge. And finally, um, having controlled dispersion on top of that um, was a, a very big challenge. So it hasn't really been solved. But um, thanks to decades of work at Genlec, actually, we've come up with a pretty good solution or people from the company developing this throughout 15 years or so. So in this case, the point source loudspeakers that are being introduced now are smaller versions of the already now famous 8351. So the point source speakers now are in the 30 size and in the 40 size for those who know uh, Genelec uh, monitor sizes. And um, we have three-way systems with that small footprint and with point source uh, capabilities. And that makes a big difference when you're recording, for instance, if you're placing microphones because you're using your ears for optimal um, mic placement and taking the coloration out of it from normal loudspeakers make an enormous difference. And you can't really, it's not something I can tell you, you have to experience it yourself. The same could be said about when you're mixing or if you're mastering, you're, you're doing, for instance, pans and putting effects and stuff onto your mix and making sure that you're making the right decisions um, is actually a demanding task where you rely on your ears. And every time we move our head, which we do, unconsciously, it's a part of our localization system. If we get sort of um, um, not the right, or we get different, um, get a different story, if we do like this, then we do like that, or that and that, then it confuses us and we take longer making the right decisions. So a point source, a loudspeaker, uh, is a shortcut to getting it right uh, very quickly. Uh, in, in many different ways. So, in essence, point source loudspeakers have been like the holy grail of loudspeaker design for decades. And finally, we have uncompromised systems, so that's why we call them ultimate point source. And um, what challenges did you have when you were faced with trying to perfect the coaxial drivers for the mid-range and the tweeters? Yeah, that's a very, very big challenge because normally if we look at other um, coaxial loudspeakers, then typically the tweeter is in the way one, one way or the other of the low frequency or the mid frequency driver. So you get these discontinuities in the signal path. So the guys that originally came up with these ideas, uh, that was actually the concept dates back to the 90s. And then it was a little bit forgotten in Genelec or given up. But in uh, around 2007, the R&D uh, director at that time, Siamek, who is now the managing director, saw these old drawings lying around and he said, why shouldn't we try to perfect it? And that's what uh, the company has been working on ever since. So um, the 8351 was the first combination 
uh, of that, especially the mid-range and the tweeter technology, uh, and with the woofers hidden behind the shield over here. So we have a woofer here and here, and the mid-range here and the tweeter here. So that really, um, that design was then shrinked because it's not the same driver uh, frequency and mid-range that's it in the 8351 as in these guys, but uh, these are now more condensed and we used sort of the knowledge we, we gained producing the 8351 to make it possible to do the elements uh, even, even smaller. It seems quite incredible that you managed to cram all this technology into such a small footprint. Is there anything you had to leave out? Uh, there, of course, there are always things where you could have maybe even more uh, power or uh, different. Uh, there, there could be b different uh, uh, issues where you wanted it to be even better. But actually, right now, I think going from the 51 to the 41, uh, it's there. You really wouldn't say there are any compromises. So we have full frequency response. These speakers go up uh, above 30 kilohertz in frequency range. They have a tremendous low frequency response, low frequency directivity, very controlled dispersion in both directions, which is not unheard of in, in normal speakers. So I wouldn't really say that at this point, I don't think there's much we actually could uh, um, improve in the design. We might be able to do other things with it, but uh, these are uh, this is the culmination of I would say, 15 years of, of hard work in, in this direction. Brilliant. Well, I really look forward to actually hearing them a bit later. And um, in the meantime, thank you ever so much. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.